Coming up on the reality of speed, David hits the track, but is Lucky satisfied? I'd like to see him work on his endurance and maybe knock off three 20-lap motos. Justin gets used to living alone. It's messy, but I just moved in a couple weeks ago. And reality hits hard in Atlanta. And they need to send him to the hospital, make sure his neck's not hurt, it didn't puncture a lung, that none of this other stuff's damaged. First off, Stevie, thanks for our best finish in Supercross this year. <laughs> yeah, no. Yay. I'm never really good at first races. Yeah. I'm more disappointed by the way I rode than the sixth place, you know. Six is not that bad, but uh, I don't think uh, I rode really good and uh, I rode pretty far from what I, uh, I, sh I should have ride, you know. So. Well, Steve had a good ride. He was in sixth place. Didn't ride as good as he did in his heat race, and you can tell by the way he talked in uh, the meeting today that he wasn't happy with it either, and, and I'm glad he's not happy with it, because uh, if he came out of there being happy with six, that's not the kind of rider I need. I knew after what happened with David and me in the shop last week. I think you're rolling hey, up. I think here. you're rolling up and riding for the paychecks, what I think you're doing. The paycheck, I could have stayed with the factory bike, I had the same freaking paycheck. Then why'd you come here? Because Chan was fun. Okay. Which you turns out is not fun anymore. Well, we agree on something. I knew that it was going to be one of two ways. He was either going to cowboy up and come on and ride, or he was going to get ugly and go the other way. I predicted before, the, after watching the practice, I predicted that we were going to go to the main event by the last chance qualifier. But we were going to be in the main. I had no idea that he couldn't even put it in the main. We missed the main event with David Zillman, and that just blows me away. I think ultimately for David, he needs to answer the big question. And that question is, do you really want to race a motorcycle? Uh, we don't want Justin sitting around and, and not doing anything the next several weeks. We want to see him racing. We want to see him lining up in the gate and racing. And ultimately, the best thing for us to do is to take him racing with us in the 250 class. It looks like uh, they're going to let us put Keeney in uh, Atlanta, Daytona, Detroit, and something else. Okay, so he's going to want to ride this. Yeah, today. So you have forks to go on this thing? Yeah, I'm taking them from my race bike. Okay. Then we need to look later today, when I have a little time, we need to look at the configuration of this engine because we can configure the gaskets to drop the power a little bit, uh -huh. have a heavier flywheel weight for it. And so we need to try to see if there's anything we can do to help him out with that. And uh, maybe he can't make it in the Supercross class, but I think he can. And the thing I like about Justin is he's young, he's moldable, he's trainable. He's somebody you can take and build something with. When you watch him ride, he obviously has great motorcycle skills. What he lacks is judgment under pressure. And there's only one way to get that, turn up the pressure. That's what I love doing, and, uh, and uh, whatever I am, as long as I'm on my bike, I'm happy, so good. The way the sky looks out there right now, this is pretty much North Texas dead of winter looking. It's drizzling, it's not that cold, but it's cloudy, it's overcast, and kind of a bad day, you know. Have y'all called down to Miller's to see if it's if the weather's good down? And it's like it is here? No, it's foggy, but it's not raining and it didn't rain. Not raining, it didn't rain. So, I'm gonna go and check it out. Steve and uh, Vince are gonna run down there and, and try to get some testing in on their bikes. Uh, Stevie's all we got to hang our hat on right now, so you know we gotta try to keep him going the way he needs to go. We're supposed to ride in a supercross, but uh, 
when it trends like that, you know, you cannot really ride, so I'm just gonna ride uh, some outdoor today. So, just need to ride, you know, so it's better to ride outdoors than not riding. The track is uh, it's pretty fun, it's an uh, outdoor track, really smooth and uh, with a lot of jumps, so it's pretty nice, you know. It's not that I'm gonna improve a lot by riding today, but you gotta ride, you gotta stay on a bike and uh, you need to always ride, you know, so it's fun, you know. It's fun and uh, just spending time on the bike, that's what I love doing and uh, and uh, whatever I am, as long as I'm on my bike, I'm happy, so it's good. And welcome to my apartment. It's messy, but I just moved in about a couple weeks ago. I don't wash my dishes very often. I wait until I get a full uh, dishwasher load, and then I wash them. Then, uh, oh yeah, got my laundry room. I try and uh, do the same thing with laundries. I do with dishes, wait until I'm all the way out of clothes, and then wash them all. This is the first custom painted helmet that I ever got uh, back on the 60s. Uh, my nickname then was Jumpin' Justin, with the little frog on the back with the writing. So I'll check out my MySpace real quick, uh, see if I got any uh, new messages or anything. And I don't. I don't get no love on this, I don't know why. See my page here real quick. Oh no, it's something to do. I get bored here, living by myself, so it's different. It's uh, it's fun, but uh, yet I'd still rather live with my parents and have my mom <laughs> doing my own laundry and feeding me and stuff. All the kids that say, "Oh, I can't wait till I move out," they don't know what, how good they got it at home. Do you expect me to make the man on two fifty? I don't know. Yes. He can't even do it. Whoa. Today we're going to try to get all of our guys together up at Pilot Point, weather permitting, and uh, work with Justin on his 252 stroke for this weekend. And we're going to try to work with Steve on the suspension. Jim's building him a new set of forks, trying to find that sweet spot for him. See what we can kind of iron out, try to get ourselves back into racing condition for the weekend. Starting to rain now, Matt. Well, the track was in good shape until it started raining now. Yeah, that might be a little bit. It won't last but about 10 minutes. The rain? No, the track. Oh. <laughs> Trying to beat the weather, it looks like it might rain here on us, so. The track's actually really good though, it's watering it just enough as we're riding it to keep it wet. He looks uh, pretty good on that two-stroker. He's got time, sometimes he looks real good. Like, the time before you got here, he looked better than when he just rode. Yeah. Does he like riding it though? Yeah. It's a nice, nice jersey pants combination he's got on there. Green and black pants. <laughs> blue jersey. White, blue jersey, orange helmet. Orange helmet. Black and red boots. Yeah. Black motorcycle. I don't know how fast Stevie's going, but on those laps, just on the second faster. Justin's going the second faster. I think he's going to come back and say it's getting slick out there now. I bet. We're just trying to figure out what uh, kind of ignition curve I want to run for this weekend because David likes the bike really jumpy and. Um, real snappy on the throttle, and I like it a little more progressive, a little smoother. So we're trying to get that worked out. Steve Boniface, he knows what it takes to go in. Knows it. It's 45 degrees, drizzling rain, the track's slick, and he's busting off 20 lap rides. And maybe they weren't really fast, but the track was wet, it was slick, and that was as fast as he wanted to go, but he wanted his mind to get in a 20 lap mindset. Pretty damn consistent, huh? You know, and that's where I have problems with David. You know, the main event is 20 laps. And right now, the way he's riding, you know, he has to ride semis and last chance qualifiers. He is, his, he may not physically be getting tired, but mentally, he's not prepared to run 20 lap main events at a race pace. And I can't tell him that. He don't want to listen to it. And 
that's where he and I have problems. Hey, yeah. <coughs> 20 laps, son. What? 20 laps, son. You girl. expect me to make the main on 250? <laughs> I know. Yes. TV can't even do it. Oh! Here, it still sounds like a motorcycle. You know, I would like to think that uh, David's going to go out to the test track today and put in two or three 20 lap motos and uh, be ready for the weekend but that would be a little bit different than what he has done in the past so just wishful thinking you know it's since the beginning of the year i did not really ride on my potential so i need to to ride better and to get the, the track down then quicker and i'm struggling and i need to do way better than i'm what i'm doing yeah it's not very good I need to turn it around. Try to get better and try to know the bike a little more. And uh, I feel good here. You know, it's it's kind of weird. It's like I feel great here. I'm, my turns are good. Uh, I have fun riding. And when I get to the races, it's different. So yeah, I just need to get uh, that feeling back and, and the races. This goes with confidence. You know, when you you don't really do good since you know seven races, it's you know, I only, uh, only had like a couple of good races and still the results was not very good, but I was riding better than the other ones and you know, the last few weeks has been, uh, been tough, you know. Uh, his lap times, I told him when there was five and ten laps and then I was telling him most of his lap times were in the 50s, so I would just show him if it was two or one or... That's why I, I do only 10 laps. You don't really have to pace yourself to do like, for example, a 20 lap, you know, you have to uh, kind of manage your energy. You cannot like go as fast as you can for 20 laps. So I just break it down to 10 and then I can charge and try to lower my times on 10 laps. It's more like working on my speed than working on my endurance, you know? I'm, I'm lacking a little bit of speed, so just, to work on it. All right, yeah, I'm done. I did my three models and the last model I did all in 51s, but the last lap I made a little bubble in the woofs, so it was good. It was a big improvement from the first one to the last one, so. It's way better, huh? Better every time you go out. Heard today David was running motos, three of them, but they're only 10 laps each. There's no question David Billman can ride a motorcycle. He's very, very talented. I'd like to see him work on his endurance and maybe knock off three 20 lap motos. The race should be good, you know. Next week should be good. I always like Atlanta and I always do good over there, so. So I can wait for, for Saturday and be behind the gate again. As far as going to the race and stuff, I just want to go have fun and keep it on two wheels because I think I might get a little excited being out there in the 250 class. You know, we have to, uh, to ride up front, you know. It's, it's uh, frustrating to be right there, you know. So we have to do good this weekend. It's February the 25th. Uh, this is the second round of the East Coast. So we're in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia is a very special place for my team. The last two years we've been on the podium here. When we came off the West Coast, I never really got the results out of Justin I was hoping for. I think he rides great. He just needs some more time in racing condition. This is David's hot rod 252 stroker that we had. We went into the first West Coast with. So the motor's a little uh, explosive for him. So I'm trying to tame it down so it's easier for him to ride. I'm kind of excited to see how he does. He seems to have more fun on a 252 stroke. You know, he'll be starting with more people, and so he has to learn to fight in the first turn. Hopefully it'll pay off for the uh, last two West Coast rounds. You know, David looked really well out there for me, too. And he's gone out there, and he's running top five lap times. 
and looks really comfortable on the bike. Practice went okay. This week they did a good job changing a few things around to make the uh, bike more uh, usable. And uh, we need to go out there and go race at uh, our best potential and see what happens. Back on the board in fifth. Well, Steve looked really good out there in practice. I mean, he was very impressive in his lap times. He was fine. Practice went OK. I got the second fastest lap time. And more for me, he was projecting an attitude from the seat that he was really confident. So last year, you got third here, right? Yeah. So you're pretty excited to come back, be up on the podium again? I try, yeah. I did two podium here already. So what is the difference here, the track? I don't know. The Just track is very tacky. The track is good, I like the dirt. Well, I said to Lucky when I came in here, I said, am I allowed to come back here or do I have to speak French when I come through here? So my, my opening was, yeah, bonjour, mon ami, comment ça va? Yeah. <laughs> you speak French, you're from Canada. I speak very little French, but I can understand a lot of French, but I can't speak it back. So just so you know, when you guys talk, I know what you're saying sometimes. Yeah, no <laughs> <laughs> Open up the door. Oh! Great foot down. Hey! We're going to send him to the hospital, make sure his neck's not hurt, he didn't puncture a lung. I felt good in practice, the speed is there, so I'm just going to to get the start and, uh, and hopefully uh, get a podium or, or better tonight. Steve's had a little trouble. He had just a horrendous start, run around 7th, 8th, ninth place, uh, got in a tangle with another guy and had to run the last chance qualifier. Coming around the outside, the 141 is Steve Boniface. Did an awesome job. He got a great start, got the whole shot, run away from everybody. Now in his last chance qualifier and quickly Boniface re-grabs that lead on that Buku Energy Honda. I tell you that Billman and Justin are uh, in the same heat race. Uh, <laughs> what are we? Second one, right? Same one. Hours. Yes. A little farther from it. So you're gonna go bet that or anything? Come on. How do you take his money? I, I'm thinking that uh, Justin's gonna get a lot of riding time tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Heat race. I uh, see. Hey, you got a got a night ahead of you, don't you? Yeah. I don't even want to go over the damn heat race. Yeah, the heat went pretty good. I did. Decent stop. First to turn one, Ernesto Fonseca. And Chad Reed just almost by him and ends up landing on top of it. Meanwhile, David Billerman leads. Fonseca's up to second. I was actually leading the race for seven laps out of eight. Fonseca alongside Billerman. Billerman fighting back. And meanwhile, here comes Ivan Tedesco. And Billerman goes from the lead to third. Got there on, but made the main straight from uh, E-Race, so that was kind of cool. Uh, heat race went all right, you know, uh, bad start, but I went in the first corner pretty good and uh, bumped a couple guys. I was like 17th or something on the first corner and then worked up to 10th. What happened? DB was in front of you. Come on, Justin. I thought you said you were going to hole shot him. You did like a double take on the start. You're like, hoo, hoo. <laughs> well, dude, I, I like took off and it went, my butt went, and then I was like, crap. And I had to like kind of blurp it and to pull myself like that. I got to finish in the top five in this semi to make it to the main tonight, so we'll see how it goes. I figured Justin was going to make the entire race all the way up to the last chance qualifier tonight. You know, he rode really good. He uh, got in the last chance qualifier and didn't get a really good start. Worked his way up to, I think, uh, seventh. Uh, I think a couple more weeks with him, uh, keeping away from injuries, I think he can get into the main event of the 250 class. Uh, bottom line, he's going to gain a lot more experience by trying to do this. Tonight, riding the 250, you know, I just was going out there to have fun and get some of the first corner experience, and uh, I'm pretty happy with what happened tonight, even though I didn't ride the main event. You know, David is riding really good tonight. He's very relaxed. Justin is just having a great time. Every time he goes out, he comes back with an ear-to-ear -ear grin. So the only guy that's... Uh, you know, a little serious right now is uh, Boniface, but uh, that, that's the way he is, man. He just wants to be the best he can be every time he gets on the track. Main event, he got out of there really good. A uh, couple of guys go to banging on each other in front of him. Hanson and Grant messing with each other. Keith Boniface takes the lead just like that. All it does is open up the door. Oh! Face goes down. Hey! Goes over the bar. It's huge. Wow. Boniface. Makes it over to the tough blocks. I'm not sure if he cross-rutted, hung the foot pegs, 
whatever, but he caught the front wheel on the back side of the triple, and it was a horrendous crash. Spoke with him in the medical unit a while ago, and uh, looks like he may have a broken shoulder now. He led for 150 yards. I mean, from that corner, double double. Well, straight, out, away, yeah. straight away, straight <laughs> away, triple. And when he hit that double, that front wheel went down. He just end over end. And those three guys were right behind him, so they were just right on top of him. David was real fortunate. He went straight out of his heat race right into the main event. Got out of the gate pretty decent, got pinched in the first turn. They uh, made the turn and started going through a jump section, and there was just chaos in front of him. Uh, he went down really hard. Not a very good weekend. We had a little mishap on the start and uh, numbed his hand pretty good when he hit the ground. So, of course, obviously the bike's not even rideable. First turn crash, took us out of competition, so. I could only tell from where I was at that he possibly hurt his uh, left hand. I don't know how bad it is. Uh, haven't had a chance to talk to him yet, but uh, you know, that's, that's unfortunate. He was having a good night. You gonna put some ice on that or something? Just yeah. keep the swelling down? Seems like this year is, it's, uh, you know, we can get to what we want. You know, every time we see the end of the tunnel, something bad really happens. Last weekend, you know, make the main, you know, this weekend, we're great in a practice, e-race, and then crush on the stop. You know, that's, I don't know. Did you see Steve? Yeah, he's, uh, he's not tossing. Uh, did you go and see? Yeah, twice. This whole season's gone. Yeah. He is depressed. Yeah, I think he has a shoulder injury. Scapular fracture. He said that it causes major trauma and they need to send him to the hospital, make sure his neck's not hurt, it didn't puncture a lung, that none of this other stuff's yeah. damaged. Yeah. They don't know which hospital yet. This is the ambulance will decide which one he's going to. The, our rider who's supposed to take us to the promised land on the podium is out. And right after he pulled in the first. <laughs>